Hi, I'm Scott. I'm an international bike fitter and coach, and I get asked loads of questions. Hey coach, please help me. I've got a pain in my neck. I just want to climb off my bike, throw it away, and lie down and cry. No, we don't want that. Let me share with you a couple of little easy tips that you can follow that will help you today. Right, the first thing is, your neck pain may be coming from your ass. Yeah, believe it or not, the way that we sit on the saddle could be affecting the pressure through our neck. Now, your head is big, isn't it? Well, yeah, some are bigger than others, but your head weighs four to five kilograms. I've got something down here. That's a four kilogram medicine ball. You can hear that. That's your head. Well, that's a light head. <laughs> and when we're holding that out in front, the muscles through the neck, they may not be as strong as you think, but What's your backside got to do with it? Well, the way that our pelvis sits on the saddle is really important. Let's say the person sits down a lot during the day. They're not using their glute muscles as they should and they've become deactivated. So I see a lot of people sit on the bike and then boom, they collapse. They have this pelvic collapse. So the pelvis is now reaching upwards. But what's that got to do coach with my head? Let me show you in real terms as I climb on the bike. So. And you can try this, try it along with the video. So as I sit on the bike, find myself comfortable, boom. You see that collapse? Now you see what happened to the glutes? They forced themselves back. Now what happens when I come forward, I lift my head to see the road. Because everybody wants widescreen vision, because you're out cycling in beautiful countryside and the hills. But look at the gap now between the top of my sternum and my chin. Can you see how it increases? And now I've got this hinge through cervical thoracic. Now I'm speaking with good authority here because I've got a plate, C6, C7, went in the front, titanium plate from a bad crash in a race that I had many, many years ago. So neck issues are really important to me. So how do we fix this coach? Well, the first thing you're gonna do is when you sit, Rather than collapse, I want you to roll your pelvis. I want you to think of rolling off the front of the saddle. So we're there, up, we come forward now, and now I don't need to make this double action to see the road because my torso is upright. Watch again, here, collapse. No, up, forward, nice and easy. And now I've got this much closer position between chin and torso. So next time you're out on the road and you feel you're doing this, you're shrugging your shoulders because your neck's hurting, I want you to think of down in the pelvis. Ah, roll forward. Sometimes I put a little sticker on someone's bike and they press the pelvis button and it just rolls the pelvis forward, okay? Three groups of muscles. The glutes, latissimus dorsi and trapezium. If you work on those muscles, you will improve that position. But hey coach, you didn't mention the abdominals. I didn't, did I? Because the abdominals are going to be working in all the exercises you do as you work those muscles. Over the next coming weeks, I'm going to be sharing some exercises about how we can improve the strength in those muscles. But I want you to try that little drill. It will help. Okay, next thing I want you to do is, on the bike again, as we sit, Okay, you're not gonna collapse this time. I'm gonna roll the pelvis up. I want you now, okay, to put your hands out in front. Almost like you're in one of those zombie movies <laughs> and you've got them nice out in front. And you're gonna fall forward until you reach your hoods. So, in this nice high, almost parallel with the ground, fall forward onto the hoods. Now, if you reach the hoods okay with your hands, in that parallel position, your bike's too long for you. Yeah, it's too long. Because in that position, your scapula are now abducting and protracting before you've even cycled. Can you see what's happening? As we come forward, okay, I'm almost got that shrugging effect and I'm reaching out. Now this is dangerous because again, this is putting pressure on muscles that are actually been asked to do breathing 
postural support, head support, and hold the upper body on the handlebars. 85% of your loading should go through the saddle and only 15% through the front end, okay? So, in this position, I'm far too long. So what's happening is, the muscles will get weaker that much quicker because you're too long. How can you fix that? You want to make sure that if you can, get in a position, I'll wind this in, to my position. So, as we come forward, straight hands, and we come down, I like to be able to get the edge of the palm on the hood. If the edge of the palm nearest to the wrist hits the hood, I can then easily bring my hand back onto the hood and I have this nice bend. I can drop into the drops and when I do that, I can really roll my pelvis over and come forward on the bike. A lot of people think, well that feels quite snug, quite small. but if you are reaching forward, I want you thinking about holding a pen. If you were to hold a pen in the middle and try and write with it, it would be awkward. Your handwriting, well, it would be worse than a doctor's. Apologies for all the doctors online, <laughs> but you know what I mean. We need to get closer to the point of control, right down to the nib of the pen. And this is what we're doing here. So, another way to experiment is, is to do a little ski jump. Put your hands back and then just bring them forward and you should be able to get, see that nice angle? Yeah, that 90 degree angle that we can get on the hoods. This means that even if you collapse the pelvis, you're not having to stretch for that reach. Now the only way that we can get this is if your bike fits you, if we've got the correct length of stem and top tube. Some bars can be changed because the depth of the bar can be altered, but you need to see a bike fitter, usually first. Make sure that your bike will reach properly against your arms and torso length and your flexibility. The last point I want to talk about is handlebars and how 90% of the bikes I get into the studio, riders are on bars that are too wide for them. So there is a point of contact in the body, what we call a cronium process. These are the bony little parts that stick out the edge of the scapula and the collarbone. Do it now. Find that little bony edge, okay? Everything outside that is deltoid. Mm, there's not much muscle in me, is there? But <laughs> I'm sure you've got a little bit more, but there, that edge. And from edge to edge, that is your shoulder width. Not muscle to muscle. We do not want to use muscle to support the upper body. Why? It needs energy. Energy runs out, therefore fatigue kicks in, posture changes and we get pain because there is something that the bar width does to the head. I'll give you a little experiment in a second. But you can measure that. Hey, tape measure, have somebody do it for you bone to bone, take a measurement. I have a clever little device in the studio when people come to me. Measure your own bars, just make sure you measure them correctly so you can measure from centre to centre uh, on the drops. That'll give you a distance. Measure between your hoods as well. That'll give you a distance. Some bars flare out. Get the distance and measure it up to where you're at. Now, if the bars are too wide, I've got a pair of 46s down here. So as I reach through, you can see now that I've got this extended press up. Your wrist will collapse. You get an L shape with your wrist as well. Now that's no good because the L shape stretches nerves. Yeah, and if we're stretching nerves, we can therefore have tingly fingers, maybe even numb hands. So if you can't change your bars and they're already too wide, try this. Drop into the drops. In the drops, your hand will go into a fixed position easier. Yeah, easier. Don't be shouting at the screen saying, oh, I can't get into the drops. I haven't got the flexibility. You bought a road bike with road bars. Experiment using all parts. It can be done. You just need to teach your body. And if you can't get into the drops, guess what? Your bike's probably too long for you. Right, but anyway, we're here to fix things, not make them worse. So I said, if your bars are too wide, but you're unsure, here's what happens through your neck. So as we come forward and we come onto these bars fit me, 42, nicey nicey. Now, if I go wide, watch my head, what happens? It's almost like a natural reaction. Try it now. Open your arms up like you're going to be like a big sailboat. <laughs> your head pops up. 
It's almost a natural movement. So if your arms are too wide, you've got your head coming up, and what happens when the head comes up? Chin and torso increase the gap. The hinge is exposed to gravity. Your five kilogram head, or your four kilogram head, is going to be loading up, and over time, boom, you're gonna get that neck pain. So there it is. From saddle, to length, to bar width. A couple of ways that may be adding to the neck pain. So what we've got to do, fix the hips, make sure the length works. It may mean shortening your stem, but it's worth it. If the bars are too wide, it may mean bringing the bars in. It may mean practicing getting down onto the hoods. Then there's the exercises off the bike. So you've got to stay tuned for the next video where we're going to talk about how to develop our posture through exercises that will really master how you hold yourself on the bike. And if you've got good posture, you're going to go faster. And if you've got less neck pain on the bike, hey, that means there's going to be a bigger smile on your face. Hey, if this video has brought value to your cycling, hey, give it a thumbs up. And remember, you stay safe. Anyone can train hard. There's only a few of us can train smart. You keep smiling, keep spinning. I'll see you in the next video. Innocence, I feel a discontent. I finally face it.